What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell. I hope y'all are having a great day. Today's video, we are going over a game by none other than Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces here in a blitz game against another Grandmaster opponent who, by the way, is rated over 3,000 online. He plays upon Ziani and he ends up winning. Let's take a look. So we got the starting position here. We got e4, e5, knight f3, attacking that pawn on e5. And uh, okay, after knight c6, we have c3. This is the Ponziani opening, not playing d4 right away, but preparing d4 by playing this move. And there's a lot of different moves that we're playing d4 against, right? f5 is one of those where we could still play d4 if we want to. Knight f6, we could play d4, right? d6, bishop c5, there's a lot of different moves. The one move that I don't like d4 uh, at all is d5 right um d4 here is just not a good idea what is a good idea though is queen a4 which is exactly what uh, magnus plays here pinning this knight to the king on e8 and uh, there's a lot of mistakes that black can make here one of them is just taking this pawn on e4 because we're going to take a pawn right back and we're going to be even material we're going to be i mean just hammering down on that pin knight and we're still going to be attacking the pawn on e4 right so there's a there's a lot of stuff in the air here and uh, yeah black's just you know having a rough go at it at the moment so you know that that would be a mistake but the the main move here the main line is f6 now that said do i see this move that much no right because hardly anyone studies against the ponziani opening i mean if you're playing e5 you got to be ready for the king's gambit danish gambit you got to be ready for the gilko piano the scotch gambit the evans gambit there's so many different things the vienna there's so many different things that you got to be ready for oftentimes the ponziani opening isn't one of them okay but i digress here we have this move of d3 very solid move right from magnus and this is actually something that i talk about in my course by the way if you're interested in you know learning more about the ponziani opening very underrated chess opening by the way i love playing it i play it all the time online um you know i'll leave a link down to my course uh, over four hours of content on the ponziani uh both in the description as well as the pinned comment so just go down to the description you'll see it at the top or you can go down to the comment section look at the top comment you'll see the link there but okay d3 is is really a move that i think a lot of ponziani opening players kind of forget that they can play Right, any point you can play d3, put a queen on c2, and uh, even get white lion attack type stuff, right? Uh, you know, at some points in the game. So, okay, knight e7. Here we have b4. Is b4 the only move that white could play here? It's not, but it's solid, right? White's just kind of making some space here. Queen d7. And here we have Magnus playing knight d2. Okay, knight d8 is played. I mean, this is, I mean, let's face it, this is some 3000 type stuff here, right? Knight d8. Um, and once the queen runs back to c2, knight e6, black is eyeing that f4 square. Um, and I think here is kind of the first move from, from Carlson where I'm kind of like looking at, you know, kind of, kind of with the side eye, like Magnus, you good. You know what I mean? Like we, like you, you chilling cause he plays his move d4 and that that's just not great. Uh, there's no way around it. D4 is just, in my opinion, not a great move. Theoretically speaking. I mean, you know, I think a much better move here would have been something like a4. Just just take some space, right? Just take some space. You're solid. You know, if black ever wants to take on e4, okay, we take back. And now our bishop has that much more range. Um, you know, this bishop is welcome to b2, a3. Um, it can get activated later. There's a ton of stuff that can happen here. Um, so I think, you know, a quiet move here, like a4 is good. If you're playing d3 with the Ponziani, if you're starting with c3 and then you, you see a line you don't like, d3 is totally fine. But then from that point, you gotta, it's kind of a slow burner, right? Take some space, develop some pieces. I think d4 is a little bit too quick here. And um, black takes, which is the best move. But here what black should have played was the move of knight c6. Because now we got two attackers on that pawn on b4, which by the way has no defenders. And we also got two attackers on d4, which only has one defender at the moment. So we're under a ton of pressure here. Um, according to the engine, the best move is a three, but in that case, black just snatches off a pawn, right? So all that to say D four, not a great move by, by Carlson, but we have capturing off here and here black makes a mistake by taking on E four. We simply capture back with the knight, knight D five, a three, right? Solidify that guy while you can B six. Let's get that Bishop out on C four. Um, and after this Fianchetto here, we have castling from both sides. Um, very sharp position here, right? Anytime you got, you know, a king on the king side and a king on the queen side, no matter which color you're playing with, it, it gets sharp, right? It kind of turns into a race in a sense. Uh, we have this move of rook d1 and a race it becomes with this move of knight c5. This is not, a, again, this is not technically a good move. Um, but, you know, I mean, we're playing, we got a blitz game here online and, and Carlson's 
going for some cheese, right? He's going for the win here. So we got nice e5, um, putting pressure on Black's camp. Black here plays the best move by just capturing it off and playing king a8. Um, this is a great idea. I mean, I think we can learn a lot from this kind of defensive technique here from Black, right? And that's that if there's an open file against your king, one thing you can do is just step out of the way, right? Let's, let's just flip it for a second. We're looking at this from the Black side now. All this pressure here, let's just step out of the way. Right? Maybe even play rook b8 at some point. All of a sudden, our king's nice and safe. It's nice and tucked away. So, you know, that's a, a defensive idea that I think is very underrated. If your king ends up getting, you know, a wide open file against it, and you can always just go to the corner, right? Same if you're kingside, right? If you castle kingside and this pawn's gone, you can kind of step to the corner, maybe even fill in with the rook, start filling in some pieces, and get that defensive game going. So king a8 here, very good move. Um, and now we have rook b1, right? So, I, you know, I skipped a couple moves there. We have king a8 and now rook b1. So, you know, Carlson here putting, you know, his rook on the open file. But now bishop c6. I mean, black here, very solid position. Um, rook e1 is played, knight f4. You know, we, we take off that knight. Um, queen b3, queen g4. No, notice how much trouble Carlson is in here. I mean, let's just say that. I mean, and again, I mean, this really comes back like no joke to this move d4 if you're playing d3 in the ponziani you gotta take the slow burn approach right and slowly improve your the positioning of your pieces now do you always have to play d3 not at all again d4 right off out the get-go ponziani very trappy very fun um but you know at this point in the game i just i just don't think we want this four pawn tension right and as we see later on Black is, you know, kind of a great attacking game because of this position breaking open so much. So, you know, Black here's threatening mate. Of course, Carlson's not going to fall for that. So we got Bishop F1. And uh, yeah, White, uh, you know, White here got a little bit lucky because Knight H3 check was played, but Bishop takes C5 is crushing. I mean, this, you know, and, and this is hard to find in a Blitz game. How did I find this stockfish? Right. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I saw this move. Uh, that probably would have been one of the last things on my mind in all honesty. It's it's beautiful though. It, it's it's kind of cool to look at because after we take that bishop, rook d3 is played. Stockfish giving up a bishop for a pawn and now just giving up a rook saying, hey, I, I don't want it. Please take my rook, right? Um, oh no, my rook, right? So, you know, the idea here is that if we, you know, I mean, if you take with the queen, you just took with the queen and there's a ton of different things that could happen there. Black could take, black could even, you know, play knight check, takes, take the queen. There's so much stuff that could happen there. And if you take with the bishop, I mean, we just straight up lose. And if you run away with the queen, uh, it's actually, it's kind of interesting. So, you know, sure, the rook could take that knight because this pawn's pinned. But more than that, the idea of rook d3 is that when the queen runs, the queen no longer, right, is defending this knight on f3. Right. And because of that, black now can take on G2. And if we capture that knight off, the queen's not defending this anymore. So we have bishop takes F3. Again, black's just offering up the rook. Uh, queen takes is on the way. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just, this is about to be over. So, okay, bishop F1. Black misses this stockfish move. And I can't even fault them. I mean, this is just, okay, stockfish. We get it. Right. That's kind of what I think when I see moves like that. But okay, knight h3 check. Knight takes f2 a check. Knight h3. Black here could have got a draw, but okay, black's going for the win here. And play, plays bishop takes f3. And it's this position is fascinating to me. It really is because Carlson is down three points in material, guys. He's down three points in material, but this is a dead draw, if not better for white. Uh, Carlson, Magnus Carlson. Anyways, Knight of War is played. And I understand. I mean, if I was up a piece against, you know, Magnus here, I'd probably think I was winning too. But now we have this move, Bishop A6. Now the best move Black could have played here, the only move that is not completely lost for Black is C6. And the idea here is that, okay, if we check, Black can run, right? Um, you know, if, if we check, Black can run. Okay. By the way, going back, okay, we can't take this pawn because of King C7. Okay. But okay, Bishop A6, Black's got to play, you know, there. We check again. And then you guys might be wondering, okay, wait, with Bishop takes C6, the Black King can run and Black's winning. Why can't Black just do it now? Well, because now they're in a mating net because we have Rook with check, Rook B7. We're going to bring the other Rook in. I mean, if you take on D4, right, check, mate, that's game. 
right? If you play rook d7, okay, check. And then we have two options here. One of them is rook c8. The other one is bringing the second rook up to b7. And that's a game over. Um, so yeah, all that to say, c6 is the only move here that help that really helps black survive because that that king's given some breathing room. And uh, and again, we we have to play bishop a6, right, in order to let rook b7 be a threat. Because if we take on c6, I mean, king up, we throw in a check, we just lose our bishop straight off. So okay, bishop a6 is played though. Now we have bishop takes c5 from black. Um, you know black desperately trying to connect their rooks the whole idea is that if you take that that bishop uh rook b8 is played it has a supporting rook and um okay i mean the the position is dead even but of course magnus here throws in a check first and then takes and uh, now we got discoveries all over the place no matter where we move that bishop it's going to be a check c6 is played rook e7 right i mean we could have we could have captured on on c6 but then the king starts running away a little bit so okay let's keep that king right where it is this king cannot move anywhere and uh, the next move we have a we have a check we take off another pawn now now magnus is the one up in material we throw in another check forcing that move throw in another check forcing that move bishop f5 black resigns the game here crazy turnaround for carlson right he kind of missed he had a solid Ponziani opening position, kind of misplayed it with d4, was actually just dead lost, and then all of a sudden came back, and now he's up, you know, about to be up six points in material. Only Carlson could do that against a 3,000 rated opponent, but uh, okay, I mean, you know, the, the reason Black resigned here, if Black just brings the rook here, which they kind of have to, one of the rooks, we can just play c6. I mean, what are you going to do, right? King goes up. We can just start trading. We're up six points in material now. Uh, and um, yeah, this this pawn's going to promote and we're going to win this game pretty quickly. So yeah, nice game by uh, Carlson. And look, remember guys, you know, don't don't just give up, right? Don't just give up on a chess game. There, there are positions that are dead lost, but there's also moments where you can find opportunities, right, to make a comeback. And that's exactly what we see from Carlson here. You know, something I noticed in his games he, it's not like every game he wins, he was winning the whole time or every game that he draws, he never was losing, right? There, there's, there's times where Carlson's in trouble, but he fights, right? He continues to stick in there and, and, and make a game out of it, right? And there's games where it's just a dead draw. We've all seen that, right? The, the dripping water breaks the stone, um, in Carlson end game. So we've seen that as well. So just an encouragement to you guys. I'm not saying never resign. Okay. I was taught that as a kid, never resign. My, my, my parents, my mom, especially would tell me that. And, and I get it. I, I, you know, I get it. Um, and I probably would tell kids not to resign because most kids don't even know chess, chess end game theory. They're not going to know how to freaking mate with two rooks or with a king and a queen, even in a lot of cases. Um, but all that to say, once you hit a certain level, you can resign, but kind of, I mean, it's rare. It, this game was interesting to me because it's, it's rare that you're just down three points in a position like this, that just kind of seems somewhat normal, but it turns out blacks, the one that's in trouble. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. And again, if you're interested in the Pontiani opening course, uh, over four hours of content, I will leave a link to it down in the description and down in the pinned comment as well. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of it down below. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything coming your way. And on top of that, I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters of the month of November in 2023. Big love to y'all. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, you can click on a link down in the description below. And in that, you will see all the benefits, including one in which we recently added, which is actually a once a month session with me, in which case we go over patrons games. I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,